In this video, you'll be learning about this topic. So now I'll get into the thing. So Lightning is for retail payments. It's meant for small payments and you're effectively opening up channel. So a good analogy here is from Adam Back is a bar tab. It's a little bit outdated analogy now, but for your, your average person, I think it's a simple explainer. So when you go to the bar, you give them your credit card. That's like opening up a channel and then you have beers or wine all night and uh, they'll charge you a hundred bucks at the end of the night for all the drinks you had with your friends. But you don't need to go and pay every single time with your card and sign and tip and everything. You just do it all in one batch. That's a good example of the Lightning Network. So if Bitcoin is digital gold and the Lightning Network and its channels are bar tabs. You open the channel and you can route through the network. You can send it payments through other nodes on the network and get to your final destination. And because it's, it's a, a network like this and it's routed through your peers, then there is no upper bound because you're not registering everything into a block on a blockchain. Does that make sense? Absolutely. And I'm thinking of it from a use case. What organization that exists today do you see this being the biggest use case for? I think a lot of merchants are accepting Lightning payments now. And basically, anyone selling something that is not very expensive should be able to use Lightning. So there are issues with Lightning Network, which is large payments have trouble routing through because you're pushing it through these pipes, for lack of a better analogy. You're pushing through pipes and there is capacity in the pipes. So imagine some liquid in the pipe, you're pushing it through. And if there's not enough capacity in the pipe, you won't be able to route your payment through to the destination. So you can fail when you're paying a couple hundred dollars. But if you're buying, I don't know, coffee, you could use it. You can use it to buy small things like stickers, pens, pencils. You could buy digital goods, songs. You could uh, have uh, iTunes supporting Lightning and pay for a song. So anything that's small, is good for now. But as Bitcoin becomes more valuable, I think we'll see increased capacity in the channels and also more rollout of uh, bigger channels. We call them Wumbo, Wumbo channels. Is there going to be any type of incentive for large holders of BTC to basically charge these channels, like you get some type of interest or to basically load up the channel so that there's more throughput amongst the, the various nodes? Yeah. So I believe uh, you can do that already by opening up channel capacity and letting people use your capacity, you can earn some sats on those transactions. And I recall um, Alex Bosworth, he's a developer at Lightning Labs. He's earned like a decent chunk of change doing exactly that. And they recently launched a pool, um, Lightning Pool, which is a service that lets you basically uh, earn DeFi type staking yields off of your Lightning channels. So talk to me about that because I find that really interesting and it's completely decentralized for, for people to do this, or is there some type of central entity that you've got to stake your coins into? Talk to us about some of that stuff. So I haven't actually played with it. I only saw it in passing and skimmed the article, so I'm not sure I can dive into their, their product. But even without their service, you can already do that just by opening up channels and routing for other people and earning sats on every routing payment, every routed payment. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on the next podcast episode and new investing resources. What are your takeaways and thoughts on this discussion? Let us know in the comments section below.